uh, we have a fortunate new member guest with us here today. Uh, Maurice is here. We want to welcome you to Torah 101. <laughs> and uh, we always start out by saying we get to study Torah for the sake of heaven. And that's a, that's a, a very big concept because we're not learning it for the sake of ourself alone. In other words, for our own knowledge. We're, we're learning it so that we can elevate mankind and help God in, in, the, in the whole process. We're learning it for the sake of heaven, at, for action, not for just self-gain. Mm -hmm. It's for the sake, for the self of receiving alone. So we always start out <coughs> by, and it's called Shem, Shemaim, Shem, or Shem, mm -hmm. you know, Shem's one of Noah's sons. Uh -huh. Shem means the name. Yeah. All right, out. Shemaim is uh, for the sake of heaven. Now, the name Shem is feminine. Shemaim, heaven, is masculine. Okay. All right? So, so that would be like saying... So that would be like saying... Uh, let me put him on the speaker. Uh, that would be like saying uh, the Nukva and Zaranpin, or Rachel and Jacob, or however you want to... Uh, at this point, it's going to be the Ark and Noah. Okay. Okay? So, so to speak. Javier's online. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn you off and get him. All right. And so, um, whatever layer we, we, we choose to do, it's, it's, we're, we're taking this information and uh, using it for better purpose. All right? Not for our own knowledge. All right. Hey, 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 Holly, turn off your sound. There you go. Okay. Uh, Javi's on now. All right. So we would like, we always uh, start out by uh, putting people on prayer lists. So if there's anybody need to put on a prayer list, because we we give them the merit of the Torah mm -hmm. from not only our study of the merit, but the merit of all the rabbinic minds and sages in the Torah itself. It's, it's the most powerful prayer you can do is Torah trumps everything. So we get to study for the sake of heaven today, and we'd like to um, have Hashem use the merit of this Torah for Brenda Waters, for Garrett and Jordan Matledge, for Cody Lovejoy, for all the patients at Texas Oncology, uh, for Brooke Gibson, for Paula Navaris, for, uh, for Michelle Magnuson uh, and Miriam's father, for Yehuda Hai Ben Matai Leah in Israel, for Carolyn Graves, for Sam Peake, for Berea Wanstaff, for Greg Davis and his family, Holly Harris and her family, R.C. Upmore and her family, uh, Brandon, uh, uh, Steve and Debbie and Brandon Matus and their family, all the families affected in West by the tragedy, and the people of the Philippines and, and in the Midwest and the Naval Base, Moore, Oklahoma, and Granbury, Texas, and the tragedies that occurred there. For Russell's back, for Nadine Friedman, for Brandon Gibbons, for David Scott, for Casey Belise, for Natalie Compton, for Edward Hubson. For uh, <clears throat> Landon Baker, David Douglas, Rosalind Body Lease, Noel Cardoza, Charles David, Eve Landers, Bill Kirk, and for Edwin James, and, uh, his grandfather, and for Emily Collins, uh, and she's a nine year old with cancer, and for Blake Hyland, who uh, is a young man with a head injury. And Hashem, we just ask that the, that the Torah and the merit of our Torah today be granted favor upon them. Amen. Ruler of the universe and master of all masters, masters Father of, of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you uh, enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant this, us with such a big favor. 
That is the reason we plead before you, that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins and that they should not bring separation between you and us. May it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. <clears throat> and may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as an aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of all our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you reveal your wisdom to the world shine. May their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit, enlighten our eyes and our learning, as is stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel. Open my eyes so that I will see the wonders from the Torah, because from the mouth, from his mouth God gives wisdom and understanding. Let the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 All right. We are continuing in our, our, our study with, with Noah, and, and actually... We, we're not even in Noah yet, uh, because uh, we had to do a little prelude to the flood there with uh, the Nephilim and what's all going there. And uh, uh, last week we uh, we we ended with uh, Hashem reconsidering having made man on the earth. And the heartfelt sadness and what was going on there. <clears throat> and this week, we are uh, we we also uh, talked about. And Hashem said, "I will blot out man from whom I have created from the face of the earth." And that's where we stopped. Now, <clears throat> from now this week, we're going to take up where it says, "From man, animal, creeping things, and birds in the sky." For I have reconsidered having made made them. And Noah found grace in the eyes of Hashem. And these are the offspring of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah had begotten three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth had become corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with robbery. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. And for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with robbery uh, through them. And behold, I am about to destroy them from the face of the earth. And that's where we started. Remember, we started with, my question was, make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. Mm -hmm. that, that was the first class three or four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to get back. We're going to finish where we, where we rewind to, and we're going to end to where we actually started the class. All right, that's kind of where we're going today. Now, <clears throat> the, I, was, I was thinking, uh, it hit me. This week, that you, you, the the reason that we're we get in this Torah and you get in chapter five here and it talks about uh, Methuselah and Lamech and Noah and the rest and all these different things and Lamech lived this and Noah lived this and Noah was five hundred years old Noah begot Ham Sham and Japheth. And then all of a sudden, God throws in the Nephilim right in the middle of this story. All right, and then, and then when and we get over here, and it says Noah's offspring was and Noah had begotten Shem, Ham, and Jeff. Why do you have to tell us that again? We we know that you've already told us that. Now now you're telling us again, and now we're going through the earth had become corrupt and then become filled with robbery. And then it says again, and God, God saw the corruption in there. Well, 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 of course he did, right? And and all flesh have, had corrupted its ways. And then it says, the end of all flesh has come for me. Because robbery, it just keeps repeating the obvious. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, <clears throat> there's reasons for that. We're going to get into. But here's, here's what happens. We know that the Nephilim, if, if, if we use birth as an example, you, you cannot have a baby without the placenta because it's the placenta that keeps it alive. But the placenta is not the baby. And once the baby is born, the placenta is discarded. And then that baby grows up and makes a baby. 
and it has a placenta and it it keeps the baby alive but when the baby's ready to be born that baby's born and that placenta is discarded it's the same story over and over and over and over the placenta the the, the very thing that the baby needs if the baby stayed in it would be the very thing that killed the baby hmm. right and so you have to have one or the other cannot exist. So there is no Noah's Ark without the Nephilim. It's impossible. There is no Adam without the shattering of the vessels. There is no Moses on Mount Sinai without the golden calf. There is no Joseph without Pharaoh. It cannot exist. The same thing as death was created first. It, yeah. Y yes. It, it's You have to have. Now, if you look at these stories, Abraham had Lot and Sodom. Mm -hmm. Right? There is no Abraham without Sodom and Gomorrah. All right? Has to exist. It all has to be. There cannot be an Israel without Hamas. Hmm. Without Egypt. It cannot be. You can't have Hasidim without Guvarot. It's impossible. Now, the problem is as Guva rope grows, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until it gets mitigated. And then all of a sudden, you have your highs and your lows and your peaks and your valleys and your this and your that. All right? So, apply that to our own lives. I, I have an arch enemy. And this week, I realized, well, here's what happened. The bugs, uh, the the road runner has to have coyote. He's got to have him. Or you know, the sheep dog has to have you know the the that other guy. You know, they when they clocked in, hey Fred, hey Sam, how you doing today? And then all of a sudden they check in, they battle like crazy. You know that old cartoon, <laughs> Fred and Sam, the, the sheep dog and the, and the wolf or whatever it was. But anyway, it's got to be that way. All right? Because there's only one thing here, and that's God. So there's got to be a left side, and there's got to be a right side. If the right side's powerful, well, guess what? The left side is too. All right? And so now, let's zoom way out. So whose fault is it? And this is where you get in trouble. Because... We're, we're going to go through some scenarios here, some Kasha questions, where why, why does God create creation when he knows it's going to fail? Because he created it to fail. So whose fault is it? It's not a fault. It is no fault. <laughs> it's not Adam's fault. It's not Noah's fault. It's not Moses' fault. Because see... He created lots of things before that we know in Torah. He created uh, um, Bilaam's donkey before the world was created. Mm -hmm. He created the sacrifice for Adam before he created Adam. And the fish that ate Noah. And the I fish mean, that ate Noah. He, all, he created Jonah. all these things before he created creation. Why? You know? And Pharaoh. And... Why did he harden Pharaoh's heart? Why, did, why is a mm -hmm. good God hardening Pharaoh's heart for his own destruction? See, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. Now we have Hitler. You see? See where this thing can go? And so we're going there today, but the, the, the biggest thing is, is we have to, we have to see it for what it is, 
But then we turn the question around and we have to see us for who we are. Because the question is not is what is God. The question is who are we? That's the question. <laughs> All right? And the, like I told you all before, there's no right answer to a wrong question. question is, what's going to happen at the end of days? What's going to happen at the battle of Gog and Magog? What's going to happen when the Messiah comes? That's not the question. The question is, what are we going to be when the Messiah comes? Who are we going to be? Where are we going to be? And what is that going to consist of? That's the right question. All right? Because of the klepa, if, if you're looking at an orange and you're looking from the outside of the orange looking at the orange, all right, it's got the klepa, it's got the covering on it, but if you ate that, it's bitter as bitter as bitter. But if you're on the inside looking out, it's just sweet, 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 sweet. All right? So, so the reason the Torah, and we're going to get into this today, the reason the Torah is written the way it is is because God is writing it from the inside looking out. But we're, we're reading it from the outside looking in. It's inverted. It's backwards. That's the secret of Enoch. What did Enoch do? He inverted everything. There was nothing that he looked at from, the, from our point of view. His point of view was he saw it the other direction. Remember when I taught on the, on the gopher, gopher? That if you looked at it, the other, as it's written, it's, it's pagar, which means death. But if you read it the other direction, it's gopher, gopher. See, Noah saw it from the inside looking out. We see it from the, because one is death and the other is the thing that contains the life. So, w what am I saying? If you're looking at Torah B, it looks like this. But if you're looking at Torah A, it's completely the other way. It's completely the opposite. The opposite is written in this exact story. And that's the secret of what we're trying to pluck out. Is what is it really, what's it really look like? <laughs> you know? Because this is God trying to describe from this side what is going on in this side. So there's only so much you can use. Alright? Now, where we left off was the animals. He's going to... Um, and, 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 and listen to how this is written. Alright? And I'll give you a hint. Look at... Look at these, these, these words over here. Okay? These words over here. On our top. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, creation, formation, completion, action... It's Sarah, a sea of Berea. I'm, 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 now, now, let's take let's take that mindset and let's lay it on top of this statement. <clears throat> it says, "I will blot out blot out man, Adam, Adam. I will blot out Adam from whom I created." So, where is he talking about? He is. What is he? Berea. Berea. From Berea, from the face, Panim, of the earth, Malchut. From man, animal, birds in the sky. So he's talking about Adam. Right? On the level of Berea, Yitzira, Asiya. Because he goes on to say, I have reconsidered having made a sia him. It's a formula. He's not talking about creation and making things. He's giving you the levels that he's working on. All right? That's what 
That's what that statement is. Now, what are all these animals here? The, the, the question is, you know, that we have is, what are animals in Oxalut, in Berea, in Yetzirah? Because we know it's only angelic stuff. There are no animals in Yetzirah. They don't exist. You know, you have the Chayot, the Seraphim, and then the Partsufim, the faces. All right? So we took what we know there, and we, and we put it actually in the verbiage, and now we, we, we can navigate ourselves of what's going on in Torah A. Because we're looking at it from a different point of view. All right? The animals are nothing more than the garment the garments of Adam. These are the garments of light. Because remember, when Adam was created, he was from one end of the universe to the other, and he contained all the animals. Mm -hmm. Right? So if that's how he knew how to name them, because they are nothing more than him. Mm -hmm. There's nothing here but God. That means animals <laughs> are part of God. It's all the same thing. We can't, we can't take the animals and remove them from the equation. They are a part of Adam. Which now that starts making sense how the animals are in the ark. Because we know what the ark is. You know, we know Noah's not his name. The ark is not a boat. Mm -hmm. And the flood is not water. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the three things we know already. Alright? So, nothing is separated from Adam. When the core is destroyed, then the garment is well. Why do the animals have to suffer? They are only his extensions. In other words, if, if, if I have a heart attack, my hand's going to die. You know, if I die of a heart attack, my hand dies too. So the, the animals, these, these things in, in this dimensionality, they're nothing more than extensions of Adam. And we know that Noah is the furthest extension of Adam. He's the tenth sirot in, in, in that, of, that Adam rebuilt. Those were the ten forefathers, the ten men that are listed there. Okay? So... Therefore, Adam, quote, all things will be destroyed. And who's doing the destroying? Adam. Because, we'll, we'll, this goes back to our whole Lilith conundrum that started the whole thing. Because if, if Adam and Lilith is the, is the issue, Adam being the Hasidim, she being the Guru, then Adam is going to have to rectify the situation. Right? And then it, uh, in, and remember from our, our class previous, anytime we, we see the word behold, behold, and then something happens or something said, this is, a, this is all, this is God talking to angels basically. Because he's giving orders. Who's he talking to? Behold. You know? All right? So, uh, this is the divine mind giving the go-ahead, talking to the angels. Basically, be quick about it. All right? And he has to make it known to them that he's changing his mind. In other words, uh, and, and we're going we're to cover this more indefinitely, but if you if you, if you take consciousness from a lower realm and elevate it, that leaves less here. Right? Mm. If I'm taking my consciousness from Malchut and I'm going to elevate it up to uh, Chokmah, to, the, to, the, to Abba, there's not going to be a lot left here. Right? Mm -hmm. That is remorse. When you remove light and there's less light, that's remorse. 
because there's nothing there. Hmm. All right. So, so what is what is God doing? He's he's taking that which is good in creation, Noah, and the extensions of his garments, which are the animals that are going into the ark, and he's pulling them out of the malchut. He's elevating that lower hay, the lower Shekinah, mm -hmm. to Bina, the upper Shekinah, Rachel to Leah. Right? He's pulling that up, which leaves what's considered to be remorse, which therefore gives the signal to the destroying angels they can do it. Because they're not going to go against his word. He has to give them the go-ahead. He has to give them the decree. So, here's our problem. What is free will? And who has free will? And one of my colleagues in the class asked me all the time, why do it? If it's God doing everything anyway, then what I do doesn't matter. Adam comes before God and says, God, you set me up. You made me the fall guy. You knew I was going to fall. And you did it anyway. Now I'm getting punished. Right? Right? And everybody after that, the same thing. Not only that, he creates Pharaoh. He creates Lilith. He creates the Satan. He creates all this stuff to punish people, so to speak, that don't do good. Because he knows you're going to... So, where's free will? Now, I'm stating it like there is none. Right? Because mm -hmm. I want you to think. Do we have free will or do we not have free will? That's the question. Did, did Noah have a choice? And did the other people in his generation have a choice? Did, did, did they have a choice at all? Or was that just the set formula of what was going to happen and, and that be it? Because we know that the angels don't have free choice. They don't have free will. Alright, so what's the answer? The answer is yes, we have free will. We, where? It's not, it's not, because we know the angels don't have free will. Well, it has to be here. Because the angels are there, and they don't have it there, but we have it here. So it would be in the concealment, within the concealment of God being concealed. He concealed himself in order to give us free will. Okay, so that means he has to withdraw. Okay. That's, sure. that's remorse. Alright, so, 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 so God has to remove himself from our presence to have free will. Yet God's everywhere. Yet there's nothing here but God. Yet there's nothing here but God. All right? But he removed himself so we could have free will. Right. So, does Pharaoh have a choice? Does Bilaam have a choice? Because God created him to do that. If you're created to do that, you have no choice. That's your function. They think they have a choice. I'm going, to, I'm going to say that they do have a choice. Um, because did, it's, because you know. Did, it, did the fish have a choice whether to eat Noah? Because he was created before the world began. The fish didn't have a choice. The fish didn't have a choice. The fish did not have a choice. And the fish is not from here, though. The fish is from there. So where are we talking about choice, then? Here. Here. Okay. Within creation, within three-dimensionality, this is, this is where we have does, a does Og have a choice? Og had a choice when he was Eleazar. 
but he doesn't have a choice when he's odd. I can say that. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, you you see how you see how this thing goes in and out because if you look at it, God knows the beginning from the end. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. You know, it, it's it almost seems like well, what the heck? It's kind of like which inhalation we're in and exhalation we're in of God's inhalations and exhalations. Sure, yeah. That's and what's the Kabbalistic term for that? I don't know. <laughs> it's called the Tzimtzum. Oh. Right? Yeah. Expansion, <laughs> contraction. All right? So, here's, that's the wrong question. The wrong question is not do we have free will? What's the right question? Going off some of the things that I have already explained. Well, if you're going off of that, the question would be, does God have free will? That's, yeah, that's the what question. I <clears throat> that's where you start. It's not based on our thoughts, our decisions, our actions, it's based on His. All right? So, we're going we're gonna to navigate through this a little bit. All right? As we said, there's no right answer to the wrong question. Do we have free will or is it predetermination or predestination? Yes. <laughs> and the question, as Russell alluded to, does God have free will? And here's another question, another caution question. What does Moses know that God does not? Because Moses gets God to change his mind. Mm -hmm. The angels would never go to God and say, Now listen here. Well, Moses was looking after God's reputation on a number <laughs> of occasions. Well, who's speaking to who? <clears throat> well, yeah. That's the, that's the, mm -hmm. okay. What'd you say? Who's speaking to who? All right. The question is, does Pharaoh have free will? Is that the question? No. The question is, what is Pharaoh? That's the question. And how about what is free will? And what is free will? Now, I'm going to break it down like this. God needs one thing. What do you buy a billionaire for his birthday? You know, a man who has everything. Probably another billion. <laughs> you know, or, you know, some, I would say love. Something he doesn't have, right? Or needs more of. All right, something he doesn't have or needs more of. What is it that <laughs> God needs more than anything? He needs our okay. Look at it. Look at it in a husband and a wife situation. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that the answer is stimulation. God needs okay. stimulation. He needs stimulation. Where do you get stimulation from? From below. From Malchut. From below. What did Moses know that God didn't know? He was the Malchut. He knew that. He knew God needed 
everything he had. So because God needed everything he had, he could bargain with him. On a certain level. Well, you, can you say the same thing about Abraham when he was bargaining? You can say it about every one of them. Yes. They were the Malchuts. That's why your wife can walk in the room and bargain with you because there are certain things you need from her. You got a job, you got your own car, you got your own house, you can cook your own food, you can wash your own dishes. That's not going you can fold your own clothes. There's many things you can do. But will you? <laughs> but she can bargain with you in certain areas. And that is what the free will, where that comes in. God, God, is there such thing as free will? No. Is there such thing as predestination? Yes. But, when you get into that relationship with God, by doing His will, His mitzvahs, all the things that He requires in His Torah, that He knows you're going to do anyway, then, the relationship changes. And all of a sudden, now it's now it's on a total different level because you're affecting him with affection. And, and that's affecting. And so therefore, he can affect your situation. All right? Mm -hmm. So, this is... Uh, did, did Adam make a mistake? Horrible mistake. Was it his fault? No. So, that's why you can, in prayer, you can go to God and you can throw it right back at Him. God, you caused this problem. You know, you put me in this situation for a reason because you are searching out this situation and I'm here to tell you about this situation, and then I need I need you to give the answer to fix the situation. All right? It's all it's all about the consciousness going out to where you are and coming back. All right? And so, because we have our map now, and I posed the question earlier of the in the messianic age. It's, the question is not who is the Messiah, when's the Messiah coming, what's it going to be like when he gets here, Gog and Magog, blah, blah, blah. Because what does he tell Noah to do? He tells him, hey, it's bad, it's corrupt, I'm going to destroy everything. Now God doesn't tell Noah he's never going to destroy the earth again. He tells him, I'm never going to do it with flood. Got to be careful. Okay? So, what does he tell Noah to do? To build an ark. Build an ark! What's that? Malchut, right? So, guess... Guess how we're getting out. The story's the same. What did God do back here when, when he built Akudim? And then Nekudim, and then it broke. He built Malchut, the Berudim. Yeah. What happened when when all that shattered and got contaminated in, into Berudim? He, the eighth king, Mahetavel, and Hadar. He built. He made the Malchut. That was the Tikkun. And not only is the Tikkun there, fixed it there. It fixed it all the way through. So it's always going to occur in the ark. What happened? They put Moses in the ark. The ark saved Moses. What has saved the children of Israel for thousands of years? The ark. The power of Malchut and the stimulation from below. This is the secret of the Torah Taurus. This is what that is. 
It's your own personal individual arc. And that was what the classes were about six weeks ago. How to build a net. So, because when 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 that starts happening, and and the arcs start being elevated, that's the rapture. Because it's going to be that very energy of the because it's the malchut that does the destruction, and that's the shechina. It's her. I mean, it's it's that's where destruction happens, and that's what causes it, and that's what brings it on. It's self-inflicted. You know, it's, you create your own hell. Mm -hmm. All right, and so the, the it's the power of the ark that dis, that made the flood. That destroyed everything. It's it's literally the ark itself, who is none other than Noah, who is Yesod. As soon as Noah entered the ark, boom. As soon as that aspect of Guvarot was mitigated, that explosion happened. All right, it's going to be the same way with Messiah. No different. It's going to be because that's the story we're in. Now, this, the Ramdu goes on to say, even the thoughts were not good. All positive thought was gone. This is the inclination of the heart, which is the product of Yitzira. The thought in the mind was evil. The thoughts in the heart was evil. So from the soul to the to the uh, uh, crown of the head. Now the angels had to know that it was going to be okay or good to remove the anim quote animals. So God has to list it because they have to know not only can they take the man but that those parts of Adam that are contaminated, but all the levels that are extended out from Berea to Yitzira to Asiya, everything. All right? But the king has to command it. When the king commands it, it's a mitzvah. So the angels, because it was a command, this is their mitzvah. But who are the angels? They're the angels of Guvarot. They're the angels of destruction. Right? This is the reconsidering and the regret. Now, the uh, Ari goes on to say that God was in remorse because he had to kill the evil. Right? But it, it just like uh, when they killed all of the uh, Egyptians, it says God was remorseful for having to, you know, you'd think he would be happy for getting Israel out, but yet he was remorseful over here because it's it's one thing. What it is, he's going in, he's coming out. When it, when he when he's penetrating far into it, mm -hmm. it's you so joy happy. But when he's when he's moving back out, it's it's remorse, reconsideration. It's not all it is is more light less light. But they have to term it something. Right? So, um, why was he reconsidering uh, from creating? Uh, why was he going from creating to making? He was giving the reason to the angels. Because um, the human contains all three aspects. Berea, which is the holy soul. Yitzira, which is the Ruach. The Berea is the Neshama. And Yitzira is the Ruach. And Asiya is the Nefesh. So he had to state, from the man I created, I reconsidered having made them. So what he's doing, he's, he's giving the directions and the formula to the angels of what he wants taken out. This is, this is the thought. This is the thought process going on with God. Humanity, however, however, humanity with the angels was corrupt 
to such an extent that the lowest level can't be can't even remain that that is created and so he had to give it the detailed orders all right so what he's saying there is that because the animals are just an extension of Adam it the the the, the corruption had gone all the way through them all right and and this is where we get the bestiality if if you're if if you're mating with an animal all right and so uh this is why homosexuality is viewed as bestiality because it's the incorrect vessel hmm. all right the animals had done it the creeping things had done it and the birds in the air had done it now the re let's gives us insight on birds of the birds of the air you mean there were homosexual birds of the air and homosexual creeping things now the Nephilim were on the earth the Nephilim were on the earth Rabbi Yossi taught that that those called Nephilim were Uzan Azael or Azan Azael right mm -hmm. as we have learned and they were called because the Holy One blessed be he dropped them from the upper sanctity and we went through that how you may well ask can they subsist in the world? Rabbi Haya said they are among those who are considered the birds that fly in the air. That answered your question. Birds are not birds. Animals are not animals. And creepy things are not creepy things. Okay? Now, which brings us to... A Kasha question. What would that be? If he's destroying Uzan Azael, or so it appears, then why do we have the scapegoat over here for Uzan Azael, right? Where does that come from? How does that iteration keep going? This is the secret of none other than our favorite Gentile, Og. Og. Without Og, there is no Ark. That's why Og existed with Noah. He existed with Abraham all the way through to who? Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses killed Og, king of Bashan. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So, you gotta have it. Because of free will, predestination, this going on. Because God, God has no new ideas. Everything that was made or in his thought has already been made. And the thought is just expanding out, and it it's new to us, you know. But it's not it's not new to him. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to hit his edge. Well, how can God hit an edge? Because he's pushing into the middle. When when everything's pushing into the middle, that's where all the tension and all the pressure and all the compressions come from. But it's making a crust. That's the hardest thing for God to make is his edge. All right. You can't have an edge without the klepa, without the guva It does not it does not exist. So he can't destroy it all. That's why Moses had to bring out the Arab raw. Mm -hmm. There had to be the golden calf. Or or it would because what does it say? Had Adam not sinned, it would have stopped. Right. Had Noah not sinned, it would have, I mean, had the generation Noah not sinned, it would have stopped. Had they not built a golden calf, it would have stopped. Mm -hmm. God can't stop. He, this is the never-ending story. It's never going to stop. Never not. It can't. It's impossible. 
But what, what's going to happen, it's going to invert. And it's going to go the other way for infinity. It, it, it's like if, if I've got a slingshot and I've got a marble in it, I can pull it back and I'm in zero gravity. I can pull it back so far and when I let it go, the inertia that it's going to shoot and it's going to travel forever. But it's this pulling back and making these levels and levels and levels and levels and, and it's the tension and the pressure that Guru wrote that slings it the furthest. So the, the, the more quote unquote pain and suffering, it, God's going to get stimulation from below either way. You're either going to give it to him in pleasure and mitzvah or it's going to be through pain and suffering. He's going to get it because that's the fuel that makes the boat float. But once it's up at his level, what difference is it? There is no difference up at his level. Down here, it appears to be... Pain and, and suffering or joy and gladness. Yes. And it gives us a perception of free will. Now, you got to kind of hold on to that. Because it is a free will, free choice down here. I have the ability to choose to drink that water or not. Right? But there, it's not. All right? Everything is done on command. And this is the biggest kasha. Okay, God says, I set before you today life and death. Choose life, right? Mm -hmm. But do you have that choice? This is the oscillation. That's why people don't get in Kabbalah and they teach them not to, don't get in Kabbalah, it's going to screw in your mind, it's going to ruin it. Yeah, because once you get to this point and you know it's a setup, then where do you go? Here's the answer. If you know it's a setup, and you're part of the setup, and you figured out it's a setup, then you can say, hey God, I figured you out. And that's what he wanted the whole time. He just got what he wanted. Well, because who figured out what? Who figured out who? Exactly. I mean, if you figured out God, then God figured out so, himself. So, once you understand you are an aspect of God, that's why every word that comes out of your mouth is powerful. You know? Everything you do is powerful because you are nothing but Him. The question is not who is He. The question is what are you? The question is not what do you have free will. The question is does He have free will? You throw it back. Back and forth. This is Torah A. Not Noah got on a boat with some animals. Let's continue. <clears throat> so, God's basically having to go through this to give them the detailed orders of destruction. I.e., in the end, in the end, the angels knew God saw everything. And if you knew you were going to destroy them, why create them, right? God, if you were going to destroy them, why create them? And God gives them an answer. He says, because I saw, I saw one Sadiq was left alive. In other words, that's, that's his penetrating light, right? So... <clears throat> It wasn't for naught. That's what God tells the angels. He is the foundation channel of the world. And then the next verse comes in the Torah. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Why doesn't it say Noah was a tzaddik right here? Because he just got through explaining the whole the whole conundrum, right? But it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of Hashem. Now, there's four different uh, answers here. Number one, because Noah was not complete yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But this is there's a problem in that. 
in the Peshat, right? But, uh... Number two, because the next verse says that he's a tzaddik. These are offspring of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. Number three, because Noah operated the opposite from all who were in his generation. Everything was directed from above and he stayed rooted in it. The, the Nun Het, the Noah, remember, if, I, I, if, if you look at it one way, it's from the outside looking in if you look at if you look at the exact same thing the other way it's the inside looking out so which god's looking from the inside looking out we're reading the story from the outside looking in so we read the story the outside looking in it says noah found grace looking from the inside out grace found noah because if you read noah's name that way it's the same word as grace so God found grace. You're talking about uh, Chet Nun is grace? Chaim, yeah. It's grace. So re if, you, if you read this from God's point of view, he found grace. Oh, it was, it was Noah. It's the same. He's saying the same thing. Yeah. You see, from, from Nun Het, to het nun, read it the other way, is grace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Follow me? Because Noah did what Enoch did. He inverted everything. He inverted everything. So if he inverted everything, he inverted himself, he is grace in the eyes of God. It's The Peshat is literal with the Sod. If you read it, in context, what we do is we've been taught that grace is this mercy thing. That God saves you based on mercy. True. But mercy and grace are two different words. Mm -hmm. The grace is the inversion of Noah. The elevation of Noah. In his, that he did on his own. The stimulation from below. Well, you're saying, so you're saying grace found Noah because he was a righteous man? Grace is Noah. In other words, in other words if I write it on the board, if I write it on the board, I'm just going to put none head. Right? N C H. Noah. Right? Because I don't have any vowels in there. All right? Well, grace is spelled. Like this. C H A I A. Chain. This is the word for grace. And so if you read it this way, it's Noah. If you read it this way, it's grace. Does that make sense? So because Noah inverted everything, like that's the lesson in this class today is invert everything, that is that is grace. Make sense? I lost everybody. Next reason. And this gets a little bit, a little bit deeper. Is because the Oops. eyes of Havaya, the eyes of Havaya, Ain. I is 130. What do we know about 130? Okay. If you expand the Havaya, and you know you can spell it out, the Asmog and Ben, that's all an expansion of the Havaya, right? Depending on the way you write it. Sometimes it's its value is 72, sometimes its value is 63, sometimes it's 52, sometimes it's 45. If you expand the Havaya to fill it with its filling out, it's the numerical value of the name of God connected with that is 58. Which is the Gematria of Noah. 
What is the gematria of Noah? 58. What is the gematria of grace? 58. So, so who's saving who? Who is Noah? Who is God? Noah is an expansion of the 58 name of God, which is his own grace. God's own grace. Yes. Yes, Noah's the grace. God found grace in Noah. God found Noah. God saw, you know, it doesn't matter how you write it. It's the same formula because it's the same numerical value. Mm -hmm. All right? And we're going to find out that this value of this name has everything to do with the destruction of the flood. Because as soon as God removes his name, we're going to find out what happens. So, that the, the permutation of Havayah here is 58. See, Noah is contained within the Havayah. And this, this dwelled on to Noah. Noah knew exactly who he was. We're not dealing with fools here, right? Not in this class. This is the favor. This is the, was the code of the completion for Noah. The completion of Noah was the 58 name. All right? And if this is 52, right? Malchut is 52, Ben is 52, and you add Yesod to it, Noah was the Yesod, what does that equal? 52 is the Malchut, the Ark. Mm -hmm. If as soon as 6, the Vav, mm -hmm. goes into 52, which is Noah, you have 58. You see, Noah is the is the culmination of the name of Yesod and Malchut of the Havaya in that dimension. So, is God taking himself out? Yes. Is God saving himself? Yes. What is his name? Noah. It's the same thing with us. We're only a permutation of that, of, of that very same thing. Now, he talks about the face here, the face of the earth. Because the face is the most external garment you have. The thing everybody sees. It's the, it's, the, it's, it's the intricacy. It's the outer edge. It's the outer rim. All right? It's the, this where you get the word facade. Right? This is the outer crust that's building on an edge. This is the hardest thing to do. Now, if, if you, uh, there's a, in the schla here, in the Shla, he, he's, he, he goes on to talk about, I'll, I'll, I'll read just a little bit. During the ten generations that elapsed between Adam and Noah, uh, and, uh, hold, hold on, let me, let me back up. We do not find any person that enjoyed God's light from the time of Adam until the time of, of Hano. Whom uh, Enoch, who God took from this earth and made him to the angel that is referred to as Metatron. Now, in talking about Noah, the one who will comfort us, right? The comforter. His name amounts to half of the name of the angel Metatron. Now, if we know Mem Tet is 49, mm -hmm. right? But if you spell out the name Metatron, okay? Mem Tet Tet is 58. All right? Now, uh, Nun Vav Resh is consuming fire. So Metatron is a consuming fire, right? Mm -hmm. But if you remove Noach, out of the formula of Metatron, what do you have left? The consuming fire. And the flood, we know, are the demonic forces that flooded down to do this in the water, let's say, just for 
Bishop metaphor state. Yeah. But what happened? It said the Torah says that it boiled their skin off. Everything it was it was destruction by heat. It was Gehenna. Mm -hmm. Because when you remove the the Hasidim, the thing that comforts and mitigates that, if you remove that part of Metatron out, if you take Urael out, that's also uh, Urael's this consuming fire. If, if, if you take Metatron out, all you're left with is the same guy that went over there and hit Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the only person left. The angel that goes and carries out all the thumping. He puts his kickers on. Alright? So, this brings the whole grace. This ties grace now to not only Noah, to Metatron, to the name of God. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. That's the formula for grace. So don't let anybody ever tell you that because you know because of God, uh, you're saved by the grace of God. You no, know, you are the grace of God. If you're saved, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You got to turn it. If the question's the uh, just the opposite. No, if you're saved, you are considered grace. It's not His grace that saves you; is that you have attached yourself and become that formulation of grace that He saves you. Which puts a whole new twist mm -hmm. on salvation. Calling on his name. Yeah. Now, it says, now we're actually in the Parsha Noah. We'll go a little bit longer here. These are the offsprings of Noah. Now, what happens when we see this and these? Remember, this is always like Hasidim and these is always like Guru Rudd. Except in this scenario. Okay? <laughs> this is where knowing the Hebrew and having the rabbi helps. You see, in the preceding chapter, it's all about the decree from the divine on all flesh. In this chapter, that now we're going to talk everything he's already said that we already know, he says again, right? In this chapter. But in now in this chapter the decree is written. You know, so it shall be said, so it shall be done type of deal. You know? Alright, now it's written. So let it be written, so let it be done. Famous Ten Commandments uh, deal. Now the, now the decree is written and the Tzaddik will reestablish the world with his generations. Alright? These, in this sentence is the word for negating. It negates everything. In other words, Zeh is this. Uh, and you know, we, we, we saw that a lot going through the Parsha. Um, and this say to the children of Israel, and Moses spoke these things. One, it's this is coming from Havaya, and now he's to the to the Malchu, now it's these. This and these. So we have Zeh is this. Zot is these. Alright? But this word here is Allah, which means both. It literally means both. But it means it means to negate. So this would be. When you say zer, this, this would be like zer on peen, and zot, which would be like these, which would mean the nukva. And, and, and you know, as we've gone through a lot of parshas, that's, that's in there, letting you know who's doing the talking and who needs the direction. But, but, and this, it negates everything. So, what he's saying is, the negation is going, of all, of everything, is going to be in the offspring of Noah. It's starting over. Because we don't, we don't need to know Noah begot three sons right there. It's written right over here in 532. When Noah was 500 years old, Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But now what he's doing is he's making a statement 
And what we're going to see is this is, is this is the actual union coming up. Before all was wiped out, the Malchut was the supervisor of the world. The lower Shekinah ran everything, right? But after the lower realm was not fitting, the Shekinah cont contracted or withdrew to one strand of a feather, who would be Noah, right? The one aspect was Noah, with the Yesod only connected with her Malchut. Everything else was turned over to the Dinim, the heavy Guvarot, the heavy destructive force. Noah was a pure Tzaddik. He was complete. It, and the word there is, he, he was not Tom. He was not blemished, you know. He, he, he had no transgressions, none. Therefore, he, was, he merited the union with the Malchut. This is illustrated in the Song of Songs by Solomon that says, My beloved is beautiful and she has no blemish. This is why Noah walked with God. But it's a mistranslation. The Ramdu says, it should have said, God walked with Noah. Because we know Noah is Yesod. So do Yesods walk around, or do we walk around with the Yesod? Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to figure out why it is written, Noah walked with God. Because we have to look at it we got to look at it this way, that way. This is, the, this is the inversion lesson, okay? The first reason is, it was to honor the Shekhinah. Because Noah was connected to her. In other words, ladies first. Noah walked with God, right? Because Noah is now connected to the Shekhinah. Because through his actions, he inherited the action to mate with him, to, for her to mate with him. This is the stimulation from below. So what's written, as below, so above. Mm -hmm. Noah walked with God. Does that make sense? This is why we see the repetition of Noah begot three sons. As opposed to over here in 532 when Noah was 500 years old Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then over here in 610 we see Noah had begotten three, three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Why reiterate that? Why go through that again? We already knew it. It teaches us that this is his supernal union. One the lower one the upper. Rachel, Leah. Okay? He reconstructed the three pillars. Shem, on the, on, the, on the right side. Ham, on the left side. Japheth, in the middle. These are the three pillars of reconstruction. It is his union with her. But, and she, being supernal mother... She's the one that is reconstructing the Malchut. So, first we have the talk. So all this over here is the talk between a man and a woman. All of this here in the Parsha is the union. You know, we, I, I met her and I took her out. We got married, we consummated the marriage. Then, the later story the rainbow, and that's the afterglow. Because the rainbow is the Shekhinah. That's why you're not supposed to look at a rainbow. You know? And the seven colors are represented in the lower seven Sirot. Her union with Zah. Or no. Mm. That's why that is used there. Okay? 
And so we can still see that this happened because we have a rainbow. Right? Now, so we can, we can look at it as all this stuff over here that we've been going through in early chapter 6, prelude to the flood and all this stuff, this is the forethought of God. This is his thoughts. All right? This is the forethought. Now over here in Parsha Noah, this is the thought. So we have forethought, thought, and then afterthought. That's how God sees it. We see it as the Nephilim are on the earth and Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And, and then he's got to repeat again, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then the, over here, all, all is good and we got the, the rainbow. But this is, this is how God's thought works. Now, the problem is, it says Noah walked with Elohim. Right? It doesn't say Hashem. Elohim is basically Bina. It's the feminine. Because now it would make sense that he walked with her. So, you can, you can start putting the layers, layers in. And she is the Guvarot. She is the Shekhinah. This is saying Noah, Yesod, is connected with the Shekhinah, her. Because this aspect of the Havaya is a her. Is a Guvarot. So Noah did walk with God. Two couples on the beach. To make it, bring it down in 3D land. Alright? Now... This is why the act is being repeated. Now the earth had become, as we know, but this is the action of the thought. Humanity, at the time of Noah, this corruption, it had removed its fear of heaven. It had no fear of heaven. It was as if there was no God. Because um, it's so Guru wrote, all, all Elohim was here. If it's here, it's not there. It's, it, 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 it had gotten so heavy. And so, to them there was no God. Now, you know, they call it uh, Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. Eretz is the same as er, Eretz means Malchut. All right. So the secret is the Malchut is called Eretz or the land or the earth. Now the earth had become corrupt before God. Now this is tricky. Now the earth had become corrupt before God, and the earth had become filled with robbery. So how are you corrupt and filled? With how you corrupt and rob, you know? But if you read the Peshat exactly how it says and know what's going on, it perfectly makes sense. Because we know corruption is evil. That's spilling seed, right? Mm -hmm. Which produces demonic forces. And we know that the Malchut is a vessel that contains nothing of her own. So... When that gets filled in her, boom. Now the shot makes sense. Right? So let's go through it a little bit more. <clears throat> Bina is always taking care of her daughter. Right? Mom's always watching over daughter. Mm -hmm. Right? Daughter's corrupt. She's dating the wrong boy. He's wild and crazy. He has no respect for men, for her dad. Right? Right? So, mom calls daughter and says, Hey, get, get back up here. Get in your room. Because you're not going to see that boy anymore. But who did that 
Where did that really come from? Who told mom to call? Dad did. Okay? Now, Abba and Ima are always in union. Correct? Mm -hmm. But Tavuna and Israel Saba, the lower half, are not always in union. It's in and out. In and out. In and out. That's what produces Zah and Nukva. So, when 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 there's penetration from Israel Saba, all is well. But as soon as he withdraws from Tavuna, now Tavuna is not mitigated anymore. This is the reconsideration. He's pulling the light even out of there. And as soon as he has withdrawn himself, okay, she takes action. In other words, he calls her, or, or he mitigates her, and as soon as he leaves, now she has, now mom takes action. Calls the daughter and says, hey, you need to be dating this Noah boy. He's a good dude. Y'all get up here. And she's going to destroy everything else. The upper Shekinah takes over. And you don't want to mess with her. You don't want to mess with the lower Shekinah either. But definitely, definitely not the upper. And this is the walking with God. You know? This is the Elohim. Now, it's very funny that, I won't, let's don't say funny, let's say ironic, that the word robbery is Hamas. Hmm. <laughs> now, there are things that, there, the, the Zohar goes in and explains the difference between corruption uh, and robbery. There's basically two modes. Corruption is, the Zohar goes on to say, that the sin was done in private. You know, the board, you know, the board at the bank was corrupt. They did everything behind closed doors. It was private. It's corruption. Mm -hmm. Where robbery or thievery is done out in the open. Right? So what happened was they were spilling seed and doing, having unholy unions and doing all these things first, at first, privately. And then they started doing it openly. All right? And because they were on the Mahout, on the earth, whatever that looked like there, mm -hmm. the earth when the, speed, when the spilled seed hits the ground, the ground's the earth, then now it is guilty and corrupted as well. So it has to be judged as well. All right? So this is the secret. Now the earth had become corrupt before God. Mm -hmm. And the earth had become filled with robbery. Privately and publicly. This is what's going on. It's, just, it's so much like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the same story. It is the same story. Mm -hmm. Abraham and, and Eleazar. It's the same. It's the Noah same. and Og. It's the same thing. And the rain and the fire and the... Same story. Whatever. It's it, all the same. It's all the same. same. It's the same thing going on with Lilith. She robbed the the seed from, from Adam. And of course, we're, we're going to go there. Now, now this happened to the animals too. Because it had to happen to the animals too. Because guess what? When it happened to Adam, it happened to the animals too. Hmm. It has to. It ha It can't not be that way. All right. And 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 it, it won't be long. You know. I mean. I mean. We're we're, we're we mix species all the time down here, creating <laughs> things. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And of course the birds, the birds were doing it too. What are the birds? We already answered, you know, let birds be birds, but they're also, and the, 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 basically, let's use the word fallen angels. They're doing it too. Because as soon as that an, an angelic entity mates with 
something down here because it's wearing a corporal garment down here that's mating with a lower level that's bestiality because what's what's the lowest level if, if you're on the level of ruach the lowest level is the nephish the nephish is animal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right that's that's why the whole eating of pork is it's the same thing you're making union with that all right but i don't get into that <coughs> uh now, there were several things that went on in the days of Noah that they did not do. They were so corrupt, but it did not get this bad. There were three things I only remember two. One, <laughs> they... Uh, did not um, cannibalize. They did not cannibalize. And number two, they did not permit gay marriage. So once you permit gay marriage, you have gone past the days of Noah. Mm. Just to let y'all know where we are on a <coughs> ethics Levels, yeah, yeah. Okay, which which is it's a sign of the time. But I mean, I mean, guess what? We're gonna be building art for long. Mm -hmm. It won't be long. Okay. Now the generation of the flood is back, stronger than ever. The Nephilim, the every it's it's here, it's here, it's here, stronger than ever. And so, here's God is has built its final edge. The crust is thicker than ever. But what's going to happen this time is the crust is just going to fall off. It's like a scab. It's just going to fall off. Because it destroys itself. It, In other words, it called destruction on itself. You know? They called destruction on themselves in those days. It's going to happen now. Now, the, the name of the virus, of the klepa, that attached itself in the days of Noah, the name of that klepa is called, uh, the name of the virus is called Hamas. Isn't that ironic? We hadn't seen that name until now, until recently, here with Israel. Mm -hmm. Who are they fighting? Hamas. It's the same robbery, the same corruption, the same spilling of the seed. It's the same klepa of the time of Noah, of the Nephilim. It's the same iteration. We're seeing it. We live in it. Yeah. All right? Turn history. Now, the robbery that is being done to her, meaning the Shekinah, uh, the lower, she should, she should only be able to contain the light that is from above. She should not be filled up with this virus that is, that is called the great Hamas, which is called in her the earth. Wasted seed draws the citra akra in, into her. The other side. The other side. That, that causes... Uh, the, the, the causes that seed to create demonic destruction spirits which is exactly what happened with Adam the 130 years he was separated from Hava this is called the raw the evil of Adam the evil of man now here's th this, this now this explains what's, what's going on you see, if you think of it like this, because we have a timeline problem. Okay, so Adam was with Lilith, and there was Cain and Abel, and then he was 130 years, and then 130 years later, he's with Eve, and now they have Seth, and then blah, 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 blah. 
No. No. Lilith and Hava, front side, back side, same thing. The 130 years happened immediately. There was no time lapse. She drew that out at that time. The 130 years worth. Right? That happens at that happens at one time. So then that's that's she's because as soon as as soon as they mate, she's pulling all that out. You know, they didn't remate for 130 years. You know, and so as soon as that's gone and and and, and you have Cain and Abel, then then boom, Seth. It's all one thing. And probably, I hadn't looked into this, but those are the three pillars. Cain, Abel, Seth. Makes sense. It has to be. You see what I'm saying? But since, since they were Guru Road and they got caught up over there, then, then, then the line of Seth, and that's where all the things come from, the Nephilim and, and all those, and the rulers, because that's the shattering of the vessels on that side. That would be Cain on that side. Yeah, and Cain is Gematria 58. If it's in that story, then it's in the, the Abraham story as well. Ishmael, Isaac. That's what it is. The first is contaminated. Why? Because the first is Guru wrote. Which was, cre which was created? What was created first? Male or female? Female was created first. Male existed. There's a difference. See? So, it's... The chicken existed. The egg was created first. <laughs> Alright? Now. We're running along. Uh, let's see. We're running along? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let me just finish this and then we'll finish with everything. The wasted seed caused the filling of Lilith. Elohim saw. This is the flesh. The flesh is the serpent. The name of the serpent. The name of the serpent is the flesh. The seed of Adam didn't cause as much destruction as this did. Adam's spilled seed did not, de cause, did not cause as much destruction as this. Why? Because Adam didn't do it on purpose. They were sinning on purpose. That's the difference, I guess, between a night of mission. Yeah. Something you do that you don't Adam do didn't do it on purpose. Eve, Eve, she made me do it. Right? Now, all flesh. All flesh is animals and birds. That's his garment. That's his outer flesh. That's all layers. All flesh, animals uh, and birds. A vessel is, is that, that it was... It was not fit for it, uh, for the garments of man. Now it says, before me, now check this out. God said to Noah, this is the coolest thing. So God speaking to Noah and says, the end of all flesh has come before me. And the earth is, <clears throat> comma, for the earth is filled with robbery uh, through them. And behold, now, we're going to, we're, we're going to, what does it mean from before me? See, Hashem, his field is filled with rockamim, which is mercy. All right? The name of the angel that governs all din is Kate Koel Basar, which translated into English is the end of all flesh. So. What is it saying? That the end of all flesh has come before me. He's saying that the angel na named the end of all flesh has come before me. Yeah. See, that's his destructive angel's name that's coming before him saying, I need permission. Right? That would be like that would be like me saying, and 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 I said to Maurice, 
that Russell has come before me and we're going to go out to eat. Behold, we got in the car. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to one person, but I'm talking about another person. He's not talking about the circumstance here. He's talking about the actual angel. So if you read it in the Peshat, now it makes perfect sense. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. Literally. All right? So, so he came to ask. He, he, he had to ask from the panim, from the face. He did not come from the backside. Because it was not appropriate. Normally, they always ask God from the backside. But it got so bad that he had to come in front of God, before him, in, in the front side of God. And God agrees that the punishment fits the crime. So that's why it says, has come before me. You're not going to find that very much. Malchut normally has ten shirot within it. Mm -hmm. There was only one left. There was only one left dangling on. And everything had contracted. All good had contracted to that one malchut. So, Noah had to contract to that one malchut as well. And, and this is the gopher. This is make the arc of gopher wood. This is the contraction. You have to contract as well, Noah. He has to contract to her level to have union with her. So, this is, and behold, I'm about to destroy the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. This is, this is, you got to make an ark, but it's got to be, every, it's got to be contracted. It's got to be sealed. It's got to be tight. It's got to be constricted. It's got to be so, so hidden, so tightly bound that nothing can penetrate in it because how you get away from death and destruction? You hide. All right? So anyway, that's the end for, for today. We, uh, we're going to continue. Uh, we've covered most of this next stuff. We'll see you next week, Wednesday. The uh, Torah is amazing and the sages are amazing. I know we went a little long, but I wanted to get all that in for today. So see you next time.